Good morning. It's a pleasure to speak to you today. Europe's metals industries have been in decline for the last 40 years, most of my lifetime. Raw materials such as iron ore and coal that the European steel industry was based on have largely run out. Other countries such as China have built bigger and more modern plants, enabling them to undercut us. And we are underinvested. Today, with the pandemic, we're living through a huge global disruption and economic downturn. So you could say we face more problems than ever before. So why am I so optimistic? Why do I believe we have the opportunities to lay new foundations for the sector to prosper in a way most of us have not seen in our lifetimes? Because I see a moment for reinvention. I see us rebuilding our industry in a new image based on new business models and new technologies, green technologies. Building a sector that will be sustainable, not just financially, but also ecologically. Regenerating our industrial heartlands and providing quality jobs attractive to our next generation. Of course, sustainability is an area where the LME is already focusing particularly on green aluminium. And I believe you're absolutely right. My own focus is both on aluminium and steel. Both are going to play a hugely important part in this reinvention. So today, I'd like to talk about, firstly, the headwinds we face, but also the huge opportunity ahead. I'd like to set out how I see this reinvention working. And I want to take a realistic look at what we need to do to make this work. So first, the headwinds. Our sector has been going backwards in Europe for a generation now. And now we face a triple squeeze. Stagnant demand, even before the pandemic. Excess capacity, which is depressing margins. And rising carbon dioxide costs with growing environmental scrutiny and pressure. In the next 30 years, global demand for steel and aluminium is set to double, while at the same time, countries are setting targets to become carbon neutral. Sure, it's a tough challenge, but it's also the reason why I look ahead with such optimism. We have everything we need to reinvent our sector. We have the technology, the skills, and the resources. But most importantly of all, we have societal need that is what will drive the change. Society needs the metals we produce, but without the pollution. It needs economic recovery after COVID. Countries everywhere want to build back better. Climate change is the key accelerator for our sector, forcing us to reinvent. Ultimately, responding to climate change is what will save us. LME's recent discussion paper rightly points out that metals are the building blocks of low carbon energy solutions. Demand will grow for sustainably produced metals. Steel is essential for all aspects of society and global demand is growing fast. But we have to change completely the way we make it, transforming a major polluter into a clean industry. Aluminum too will play a vital role in the transition to a sustainable world. By reducing weight in electric cars, for example, we see, growing down, we see growing demand ahead. But again, we have to reduce aluminum's carbon footprint dramatically. This is an area that the LME has been quite rightly been working on. How to play your part in supporting this change through adjusting the way the market works. So now, what are we doing to drive this reinvention? First, in aluminum. As with steel, this is an industry where Europe can lead after many years of decline. Europe's consumption of aluminum is actually growing. We are up about 7% in the last 15 years. But we're producing less, down 20% over the same period. We're making up the shortfall mostly from China, which is, power, which is powering ahead, producing more and selling both primary aluminum and finished goods to the world. But 
China produces most of its aluminum using electricity from coal with a huge carbon footprint. Now is the time to create an advanced, a low carbon aluminum industry right here in Europe. We are moving quickly to do just that, building a fully integrated low carbon aluminum business. This year, we launched a unified vertical for our aluminum business under Alvance, headquartered in France, with assets across the supply chain from raw materials to finished products. We're investing in large scale renewables, the electricity needed essential in aluminum, and we've just launched a joint venture in Spain to build 1.2 gigawatts of solar and wind power. As the cost of renewables fall, we will produce more and more aluminum with dramatically lower carbon emissions, what we refer to as green aluminum. Building on the foundation of our two smelters, Europe's largest in Dunkirk and UK's only smelter in Lock Harbour, we recently also completed the acquisition of Tuffel in Belgium, Europe's leading auto body sheet producer. We're now targeting more acquisitions. We're almost at 600,000 tons capacity per annum, and our target is to reach at least a million tons within the next two years. In steel, we're part of an even more fundamental reinvention. The advent of hydrogen steel making will turn this from one of the dirtiest industries to one of the cleanest. Traditional carbon steel production is the largest CO2 emitting industry. It accounts for nearly 9% of global emissions. That's because it uses coal in blast furnaces to remove oxygen from iron ore. This produces a lot of CO2 as a waste product. That has to change. And green steel is the answer. Steel without carbon emissions. We are pursuing different green steel models in different parts of the world. In Australia, for example, where we have plenty of iron ore and perfect conditions for wind and solar power. Here, we will be using this renewable electricity to produce hydrogen from the electrolysis of water. Hydrogen is the key. Hydrogen replaces coal in the steel making process. Instead of using carbon to remove oxygen from iron ore, hydrogen does the same job and the waste product is simply water, no CO2 emissions. So we're building a 280 megawatt solar farm near our steel plant in Wyala in South Australia, which we will expand to three gigawatts, the largest solar farm in the world. At the same time, this hydrogen steel model solves a fundamental problem that the hydrogen industry itself faces. It's very difficult and expensive to store and transport hydrogen. It quickly stops being cost effective. But when you make hydrogen and feed it straight into a steel plant, you step around that problem. Instead of shipping hydrogen around the world, you ship green steel. Here in the UK and parts of Europe, conditions suit a different process. We've used up most of our iron ore deposits, but we have accumulated a lot of steel in our infrastructure and consumer goods, such as cars. And since steel is not perishable, it eventually needs to be scrapped. This old steel can be remelted into new steel using a growing supply of renewable power, a truly circular economy. The UK already generates more than enough scrap to feed all its fresh steel needs. And studies by Cambridge University show that scrap arisings in the UK will double in the next 10 to 15 years. So in the Europe, the model is a bit mixed. In some places, we'll use hydrogen to reduce iron ore, same as in Australia. But in other places, like in the UK, we will use wind, solar, hydro, and biomass to power electric arc furnaces, turning scrap into fresh steel again, with a very low carbon footprint. We already have the UK's largest electric arc furnaces running in Rotherham, and at our, and at our plant in Newport, we intend to build new arc furnaces that will be powered by the world's first power plant that is being converted from burning coal to run on end-of-life waste. Thinking globally, it is worth stressing that both in aluminum and in steel, these revolutions in technology are already happening. The question is, who gets to lead? We are in a global race for leadership in sustainable metals, especially in steel. A race against China, India, and others. Governments around the world are supporting these efforts. So what is it going to take for Europe to win this race? I would like to pick three things. 
Firstly, consolidation, then collaboration, and most importantly, the right policy framework. Consolidation first. Quite simply, scale enables companies to lower costs and compete globally. Critically, it enables the large-scale investment needed in technology. At GFG, we are playing our part in this consolidation through our acquisition strategy. It's put us at the vanguard of modernizing and reinventing steel and aluminum industries. Secondly, collaboration. Partnerships can spread cost, they can speed up change. The scale of investment needed means we must think differently about alliances. It's a lesson that the car industry has already learned. Faced with the challenges of funding R&D in electrification and autonomous driving, businesses are already cooperating to share investment costs. Ford and Volkswagen, JLR and BMW, all working together in ways they would have barely considered in the past. So our industry needs to collaborate, share knowledge, share costs in joint ventures. For example, in investing in hydrogen steel technology, which is very expensive. Finally, policy, where we need big, bold steps. Fundamentally, I believe policy frameworks everywhere need to support and incentivize the move to cleaner technologies. Policy needs to encourage innovation and problem solving, not protect failure. We operate here in Europe, in the US, in Asia, and in Australia. I take a global, long-term view. We can debate policy and regulation details at a local or regional level, but carbon does not respect borders. I believe we need a global price for carbon. That's what would really drive change. That would be a nirvana. However, this does not look likely today. So, if we can't have the global carbon price nirvana, we need policy which is national and regional, incentivizing investment in low carbon, low carbon technologies and give, giving a competitive advantage to those who move the fastest. Europe is taking the lead in creating an ambitious policy framework on climate change. But doing this alone is challenging. Europe is having to operate a complex system of allowances and emissions trading systems with discussions about a carbon border to stem leakage. Ultimately, only one thing is going to make our sector safe. And this is not propping up a failed old model. It is reinvention and investment in new technology to eliminate carbon. Reinvention is what policymakers and regulators should be aiming to support and reward. With the right government policies, we can be ahead of the trends, not playing catch up. We can establish secure margins and attract investment to deliver on the long-term goals that really matter. Let me finish where I started, with the opportunity. The first industrial revolution began 250 years ago, right here in Britain. In our own lifetimes, we've also seen a digital revolution unfolding, led by the US and Asia. And now there's another revolution coming, an environmental revolution, just as far-reaching and just as important. And this time, it's an opportunity for Europe to lead. We need metals to fulfill this potential in helping the world's wider transition to a low carbon system. That need will drive the reinvention of our sector. Today, our children see heavy industry as something that's killing our planet. They're angry. They're protesting in the streets around the world. If we can reinvent our sector, we can create something that our children and their children can be thankful for and be proud of. Now that's a prize worth seizing. This is our moment and we all have our part to play. Thank you.